Hello dear students, so welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Neha Taneja. I am a public health specialist by profession, but I am a mentor and guide of PSM and uh, uh, by passion, all right? So today I've come up with a very important topic. It's about a, a, a topic that's asked in almost all the entrance examination, be it NEET, PG, FMG, INICT, or any other UGC net, anything. It's about all about ASHA worker. It's about what all you should be knowing about ASHA worker or other grassroots level workers. So we will be discussing this topic with the help of certain MCQs as well. So are you all ready? Okay. So now look over here before we begin uh, just a little bit about myself. You can follow me on my telegram group link channel link for various PSM related updates and questions and MCQs. Also, you can follow me on, on my Instagram account and definitely on my YouTube channel. You can also listen to all my lectures on an academy platform. All right. I teach on a PSM on an academy platform. We are also at an academy starting the next 2022 batch which will help you prepare for next 2022. My PSM classes there will be from 18th of January to 28th of January. Okay, so this will be six hours of PSM every day. We'll be completing PSM in 54 hours. All right, it will be a morning batch and we'll be finishing by three o'clock in the evening. So if you want like subscribing, you can use code PSM10 and subscribe. Any new students who are from FMG batch course, you can subscribe to the FMG batch course on an academy here. We help you prepare for an FMG and uh, you know, you can gain confidence and these are your educators who will teach you. Again, you can use my code PSM10 to get a 10% off. Like I said, the advantage of plus subscription is that you get an access to daily life classes, structured courses, tests and quizzes and unlimited access to all that's happening live on an academy platform. All right, so tomorrow morning, just a little heads up for all of you at 10 a.m. I am having a PSM mini revision for vaccination with MCQs and images. So all of you can join in for that free class. You can use my code PSM10 and um, you know, you can use code PSM10 to enter the class. It's absolutely free. And at 3 p.m. also, I will have another class free on an academy platform, which will be rapid one-liners with PSM images. Also in the morning at 8.30, I have another class, which is absolutely free for on 50 PSM images. So you can attend, you can end your year with a PSM bang and attend all these classes, which are live on an academy platform. Okay, now moving to the topic for the day about ASHA workers, a very confusing topic at times for students. So let me tell you all about the criteria, eligibility, everything that you need to know about ASHA workers. So I've put in a few MCQs. The first one is about ASHA, true is all except they are preferably females. There is one ASHA worker per thousand male, per thousand population, sorry. ASHA is a skilled birth attendant or she provides medical care for minor ailments. So your question is about ASHA, true is all, okay? All are true except. So which is not correct answer? She is preferably male, yes. There is one ASHA worker per thousand population, yes. She is a skilled birth attendant, no. All right, but she does provide medical care for minor ailments. Who is a skilled birth attendant? Skilled birth attendant is another grassroots level workers. Actually, who are these grassroots level workers? Okay, grassroots level workers work at community level. They are your first contact between the community and the healthcare delivery system of India. As we proceed, I will show you a list of the various grassroots level workers also. Okay, so they basically provide us, uh, they are the first level of contact between community and healthcare delivery system. Now, who is a skilled birth attendant, everybody? Skilled birth attendant is actually a TBA. What is TBA? TBA is a trained birth attendant, okay? She's a female trained birth attendant. Originally, she was known by the word Dai. Dai is no longer used nowadays. Okay, so she is a trained birth attendant. Now the question is that to become a TBA, what is the population? Uh, like is there any education criteria that is needed? No. 
for a TBA there is no education criteria okay the education is like nil okay that will also work the training a TBA receives is for what duration training that a TBA receives is for one month all right and uh, there is always one TBA per thousand population clear so this is about a trained birth attendant now let us come back to the question of Asha. So yes, they are preferably females. What is the age that they belong to? 25 to 45 years of age. All right. She could be married. She could be divorced. She belongs from the same community. Now comes the question of her education. So does an Asha worker need to be educated? Yes, she needs to be educated. What is the cut off for education now? As per the revised guideline, she should be educated up to 10th class. What is the duration of training that an Asha worker receives? These are important questions. Duration of training that an Asha worker receives is 23 days. All right. Other questions. Who selects an ASHA worker? Who selects an ASHA worker? These are questions that come as MCQs and you students get confused a lot of times. So who selects an ASHA workers? It is anybody. Uh, you can think to yourselves and uh, just think about the answer. Yes, it is village panchayat. Okay, it's a village panchayat who selects the ASHA worker under supervision of, under supervision of a medical officer. But if I ask you, the training period I've told you is 23 days, but who trains an ASHA worker? So training is provided by an ANM plus Anganwadi worker. These are the important points of an ASHA worker. She's never a skill birth attendant. She has to provide medical care. She carries an ASHA kit. In the ASHA kit, what all are present? Anybody? She has, you know, she carries in it contraceptives like OCPs. She also carries Nishche. What is Nishche? Nishche is a UPT, uh, a home based UPT kit that she's also carrying in her uh, Asha kit. Okay. She also carries certain, uh, you know, Ayush medications, paracetamol, certain uh, ORS packets, all that are chloroquine tablets. All these are present in the Asha kit. All right. So this was one of the most important slides for Asha. Now let us look at one other question. Yes, one Asha covers a population of 1000, 2000, 3000 or 5000. So one Asha covers a population of 1000. All right. This is the existing norm. Existing norm kitna hai? Existing norm hai? One Asha per thousand population all right everybody but one proposed norm kitna hai proposed norm that we are proposing is two asha per thousand population so read questions very carefully if it asks you existing norm of asha so that is one asha per thousand population but if it asks you the proposed norm for asha so proposed norm for asha is two asha workers per thousand population all right okay now over here uh, this is a question to understand about the function or responsibility of asha workers the first one does she accompany pregnant females to hospital helps in completion of humanization as per schedule spreads awareness regarding contraception malaria slide preparation so use the following key to mark the correct answers if a b c are correct a and c are correct b and d are correct or all four a b c and d are correct now definitely her function is to mobilize pregnant females accompany them to hospitals absolutely correct completion of immunization as per schedule correct spreads awareness about contraception absolutely correct malaria slight preparation is not a function of asha worker whose function is to prepare malaria slides it's the function of a multi-purpose worker male all right where are these multi-purpose worker male or females posted they are posted at the sub centers 
Now, multi-purpose female also does not have to prepare malaria slide. That's only the function of multi-purpose male worker. All right, ANM is also posted at a sub-center. She is multi-purpose female worker. She is also not responsible to prepare malaria slides. Okay, they cover a population of one per five thousand in plain areas and one per three thousand in hilly areas. Other than this, also there is certain. Um, you know, there, there are certain roles that she has to play, ASHA worker, mobilizing children for immunization campaigns. Uh, then ASHA worker can also act as a DOTS provider. ASHA worker can also has to, she's the main person responsible to carry out um, uh, home-based newborn care. All right, she provides home-based newborn care, okay, which we'll be studying in our subsequent lectures. She's also one to promote family planning services. All those are important, okay? So these were some of the questions of ASHA worker. Now, if we have to talk about the incentive that an ASHA worker receives, please remember she gets an uh, incentives or honorarium that can total up from 3,000 to 4,500 rupees, all right? Like if she's acting as a DOTS provider, okay, if she's acting as the DOTS provider, then um, let's write it over here, all right? If an ASHA worker acts as a DOTS provider, okay, then if she is ensuring successful com on successful completion of new cases and previously treated cases all right what is the incentive that she receives an asha worker or anybody who's acting as a dots provider previously treated cases or new cases rupees th thousand on successful completion of mdr and xdr cases she receives an incentive of rupees five thousand other than that, she also receives incentive for detection of leprosy cases, okay? So, when she can detect a leprosy case without disability, okay? If she is able to detect a leprosy case without disability, she gets an incentive of rupees 250 per case. If she is able to detect a leprosy case with disability, all right, she is able to get an incentive of rupees 200 per case. If she follows up a case of posse bacillary leprosy till full treatment, which is uh, up to say six to nine months, okay, then she gets an incentive of rupees 400. If she is able to follow up a multi bacillary leprosy case for the entire duration of treatment, 12 to 18 months, she gets an incentive again of rupees 600. Clear? Then, uh, in cases of family planning, also there are certain incentives that are asked for an ASHA worker. If she is able to ensure spacing at birth, okay, for a couple, she is able to ensure spacing at birth, okay, she gets rupees 500, at least two years. Or if she is able to delay the birth, if she is able to motivate a couple to delay the first birth after marriage, then also she gets an incentive of 500. If she is able to motivate a couple, you know, to um, go for sterilization, uh, to go for vasectomy or tubectomy, all right, after, uh, after uh, having children, then she gets an incentive of rupees 1000. So these are some of the incentive that ASHA workers, uh, you know, get. If you have to, you know, I have to know about more of this, you can attend to my lectures on an academy also where I, we cover all these topics in quite detail, but this is the bare minimum that you should know. Now, one last slide that I want to show you of the various grassroots level workers, okay? This is ASHA worker. And look at the last one, Anganwadi worker. They are two most important workers. How are you going to remember it? Both start with an A and A. So both are based, uh, you know, both are for a population of, Asha is for a population of one per thousand, okay? Asha and Anganwadi worker, okay? And this is for a population of 400 to 800 in plain areas, all right, and one per 300 to 800 in hilly areas. Are you understanding everybody? Okay, now 
you have to know the education level so education level of asha and anganwadi is the same so both that start with an a it's eight uh, it's 10th class and 10th class then the training asha is 23 days but since anganwadi worker is dealing with children so it's four months all right then comes tba i have already told you tba may uh, one per thousand village level no education required because only she has to be trained to carry out delivery then village health guide all right now she is also a lady she since she's a guide sixth class is enough with a three month training and multi-purpose worker male and female since they are posted at sub centers okay then they are for a population of one per five thousand and they should receive like you know they are multi-purpose worker male and female so they should be educated up to 12th class with a 12 month training duration all right 12 and 12 so 12th class education and they should be trained up to 12 month duration for 12 months duration all right so these this video was a short one regarding grassroots level workers particularly asha workers i hope all of you like the video if you have any questions any doubts any queries put in the comment section below do attend my free sessions on an academy 10 a.m in the morning uh, the link is in the description box also uh, subscribe to various courses if you want to make PSM learning interesting. Thank you so much for watching guys. Have a very good uh, new year and stay blessed. Thank you so much.